a lot of others have had their their situations and the things that they uh, they deal with. But uh, thank the Lord that He is a uh, a presence that He knows He knows exactly what we are all dealing with. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, are you glad you're in church? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the uh, opportunity and privilege we have to to be in the house of the Lord. Amen, amen. The Army Areas Quartet will be with us uh, this coming Sunday evening. They'll be here at 6 p.m. for the 6 p.m. service. So I wanted to make mention of that to you. Uh, I think that they'll hopefully they're affiliated with a group that's been here several times in the past is the reason why that I uh, I told them yeah come on and uh, we'd love for you to be here and uh, talk to uh, to one of their lead leaders in the group today and they are looking forward to being here so uh, you just keep that in a matter of prayer just for good singing, amen, take place. I'm, I'm ready for a good singing, amen. amen. Praise the Lord, amen. All right, in the book of Revelations, is that the right book? Yeah. What chapter are we in? Five. Chapter number five. Hey, you guys doing y'all's homework, y'all doing good. <laughs> it's not because you got a cheat sheet, is it? <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Revelations chapter number five, Amen. I'm going to go into chapter number five, and uh, as you see, we're going to deal with a little bit at the start of it, a little bit of information I want to give you at the start of this chapter. Before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you this evening for your word. We ask that you just watch over your, your individuals, your vessels this evening, Lord, as we, we give, and Lord, in the reception, receiving your word, whether it's right here in this sanctuary. Let's go Lord, to the Lord in prayer. Father God. Or, by the way, a live stream. Lord, we know that you are the answer this evening. And we yield to you as those yielded vessels. And thank you for that anointing, the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And we give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. And thank you for the great echo, Lord. <laughs> amen, amen. Let's us know we're alive. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Revamped all this stuff, so we may have some other little glitches. We shouldn't have, though, should we? Amen. But at any rate... Hey, it ain't your fault. It ain't your fault. Don't apologize. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we uh, we updated our, our system, and uh, it is for the benefit of our uh, for our viewers that are out there. So I think they will appreciate it as well. Amen. Revelation chapter number five. You have your sheet. Let me go over a couple of these things. I know you can, you can say, I don't need you to read this to me, preacher. I can read it, but it's a whole lot better if I can read it to you and you read it with me. <laughs> Just really wanted to give this for you for some information that I think is very important. Because uh, I've jotted a couple of things down I think is very important. What we're fixing to go into, what we call or as far as with the, uh, with the meat of revelations or within the uh, timing element that's going to be happening after the church has been taken away. Proponents have, uh, have tried to relate that the seven seals to the church history to the time of the end. Try and relate that to that. But, listen, there's no reference that's been given to the church after chapter number 4 until we reach chapter number 19, except for chapters 2 and 3. Revelation is more concerned with the time of the end, and that's what's given. There are proponents, and even one of the prime speakers uh, that is on TV. He did not even believe there's going to be a rapture of the church. But I'm telling you, church, there's too much evidence uh, to show and to prove uh, this church is going to be caught up. And again, I'll refresh this to you. Don't know if we'll ever have time to do this or not, but there is detail that lets you know the church uh, does not have to go through the great tribulation. Does it go through tribulation? You bet you. You and I go through tribulation. Will it get worse than it is now? Very possible. But it's not the great tribulation. There is a difference. We'll distinguish that sometime in the future. But let me read a couple of verses of scriptures. You don't have that in your setting. But uh, in the book of Daniel, in Daniel chapter number 12, 
Here is something that Daniel said in verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, what the angel is saying to Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. What were we just talking about? The time of the end. Okay? And then in verse number 13, he also says this. He says, But go thou thy way till the end be. Until the end is going to be here. He says, For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. At the end of what days? At the end of the great tribulation period. Because you know what? When we understand this, it is this so that we understand it more clearly. If this is so, then we understand that the seven seal book does not relate to the church age. The procedure which follows is clearly judgment procedures that we're going to be dealing with them from here on through Revelations till we get to 19. What's going to happen? This is going to clear the earth and the heavenlies. What's the purpose of the rebellion, of evil? To bind and to judge Satan and those that follow him. To establish God's kingdom in the earth and for eternity. That's why we look at Revelations and that's why we look at through the scope of it and understand it more clearly. As we're related to you, it is for our understanding. It's not to be up above us to go overhead. But, and I know I keep emphasizing and restating things, but we have to understand and know clearly that a natural man cannot discern the things of a, a, a natural man, but he has to be spiritually discerned. And a spiritual man will understand what that scripture is saying. Does that make sense? Amen. For the reality of it. So let's look at verse number one. Everybody ready? Now shout amen. amen. Verse one, chapter what? He said, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals in the right hand. The right hand, as you see and is aware, is a symbol of authority. With this hand being authority, it is interesting to note. It is sealed with seven seals that we're going to be opening up and looking at in the, in the next few weeks. The word seven seal, the word seven means completeness. It means fullness. God's authority and the legal confirmation is going to bring forth the fullness and the consummation of the redemption that has yet to come. We haven't seen that yet. That is to come and that will happen. I'm not going to go through all these scriptures, but Ephesians, Romans, Philippians, and Isaiah, these are all scriptures that are going to verify what they said. So that's a little homework for you, okay? So sometime through the week, look at each of these scriptures and it will confirm because this will... This will confirm the fullness uh, and also the awareness of the redemption uh, that's going to come through Christ. Uh, because in Isaiah 65, verses 17 through 25, really brings forth uh, a really good nuggets in that uh, that's going to happen at that end result, uh, at that end time. It's according to John, we have to note, in the book of John, St. John chapter 12, verse number 31, we know that Satan, called the old usurper himself, uh, he's going to have to be judged. And at that time, he's going to already be judged. Because when the devil is judged, that's when God is going to bring forth his kingdom. That's whenever God is going to bring forth his glory. We're going to see his manifestation throughout this earth like we've never dreamed or fathomed. But what he really ordained it to be from the start, but because that Adam failed, sin came in, that's why we see the difficulties and the devastations we deal with today is because of that little big word, S-I-N. And it's becoming more prominent, dominant, and bigger than ever before in our society, even in our nation today. That's why we need to just keep looking up, looking up. Our redemption's drawing nigh. Don't know when it's going to happen, 
but I believe it's happening. Amen. I believe it's going to happen. Verse number two. Everybody still with me now? He said, and I saw a strong angel. This angel is a messenger, okay? And he says, proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Does that not let you know that this must be pretty important? And John bringing this forth through the angel that is speaking to us, uh, it's not just to take up words on a page, okay? Who is worthy? Who is worthy? Only the perfect, sinless sacrifice could be worthy. Who's the angel here? Really is believed that the angel that has been represented here is the angel Gabriel. Whenever you look at the book of uh, Daniel and you look at Revelations, they just work hand in hand. Revelations complements Daniel. Daniel complements Revelations. You will see this fulfilled in the book of Daniel as well. Because here you will find Gabriel that is evidenced in his appearance to Daniel in relating and alluding to these type things as well. Verses number 3 and 4. And it says, And no man, isn't it sad? No man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man, he emphasized that, was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. I thought it was interesting, because when you look in the Greek, in the Greek word, when it uses the word weep, much here. It means to weep proficiously. It means, I mean, cry bitterly. You see, whenever you're, uh, when you and I are maybe, we, we was in that situation when you was about to, about to get a spanking, going to get a thrashing, and uh, you thought maybe that could curtail it from mom or dad, and you just start really, you went, <laughs> oh, you <laughs> I mean, you really started bawling and squalling. Huh? Amen. Oh, well, maybe you didn't, but anyway, praise the Lord. But anyway, he cried bitterly because of this fact that it's happened. See how it's, how it's in the heart and how it's hitting it there? No man, no man was found worthy to look their own or to look upon here in this book. But notice the book is grasped by God. God's the one. The Lord God Almighty, the great creator of all creation. He is the one that grasped the book. And he's offered for anyone to take the book who can take it. Some have uh, made the statement in the past, well, we're not going to be able to know what God looks like. I mean, I mean God is just, uh, he's, he's everywhere and he's a spirit and so forth. Yes, you are. God does have an image. We get a glimpse of him in different places in Scripture. We know Ezekiel gives us a different glimpse of him and Daniel, some other places. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to see the Almighty God, but yet the Almighty God that is, he is, yes, omniscient, omnipresent. Uh, he is the one that is in all authority. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord for it. And so, as we look at that note... If you would, let's look in at verse number 5 and number 6. Everybody with me now? And one of the elders saith unto me, talking to John, don't weep. Can you? It's hard for me to really grasp, to be honest, with you, standing here speaking to you as I am to be able to picture John. Because of that, that hit John so deep that there was no man worthy to open that book but that was one special book but no man was worthy and it hit John so so hard if you want to use that word or, or so intimate within his spirit nobody was worthy to do that maybe he ought to felt that why couldn't I do it God, I believe without doubt John was a righteous man how many know through scriptures of the righteous individuals uh, that we prayed 
that are portrayed through Scripture. Know what I'm talking about? Okay, continue on then. And he says, uh, weep not, behold. He says, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He says, the root of David hath prevailed. He opened, he opened the book and he loosed the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, is what John is saying, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a what? Lamb. Lamb. Oh, hallelujah. As it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Listen to this preacher. God gives you this description. He gives you this distinction because it's important that you can see the omnipotence and the omniscience and the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse number 7, he said, And he came. Who came? Naturally, the Lamb. And he took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Now, I know that the oneness have troubles with uh, dealing with this, but they explain this stuff uh, because, uh, and I'm, I'm not here to preach against oneness, okay? But there is God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. There's too many times in Scripture that verifies. Here is one of those times. Jesus is not throwing his voice like they said whenever there was at the baptism of Jesus and said that there was a voice that came, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And, and they said, well, he, Jesus was just throwing his voice. God or Jesus don't have to throw their voice. Okay? And I'm not being critical. I'm, what I'm, I'm emphasizing a point. Okay? The importance here, there's an almighty God. Hallelujah. An almighty God. And there is the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son. They have been from eternal unto eternal. It's, okay? Because they are one. But the difference has been because of the manifestation that took place. Verse number 6. It said, A lamb, a lamb, as it had been slain. Now, as being recorded here, you've got to understand, there are identifying marks that are here in this lamb. The sacred wounds that is in the hands of we know who it is. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The wounds that is in His feet. The wound that is in His side. He is about to assume His judicial work. What kind of judicial work is He about to assume? I'm glad you asked. Look what He said. Verse number 5. He said He was a lion of the tribe of Judah. He said also He is the root of of David. When we look at him and we realize who this lamb is. As the root of David, we know we know him and we understand him. We look at the line of the tribe of Judah. But yet what about the root of David? He is the son of God. He preceded David as son of man. He was David's lineage. We read that through Scripture. Everybody still with me now? Okay. No need of going, going back and going through all that. Christ is revealed in His power. In His power. Seven horns, He tells us. What's seven horns? It's His omniscience. God knows all things. Jesus knows all things. Remember what, what God said? What Paul gives to us? What Jesus said? All power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. As the Father sees, that's as Jesus sees they are one. They are one. There are three that bear a record in heaven. Let me go on. I'll start preaching. Okay. Seven eyes. The seven eyes are the sevenfold anointing of the Spirit of Almighty God. What does the word seven mean again? Perfection. 
fullness, wholeness. It lets you know that whenever Christ is doing the anointing, God is doing the intercessions, uh, He is doing it uh, so that there's going to be, without doubt or reservations, uh, that He's the one that is in control, the Almighty God. I like Isaiah chapter 11, verses 2, verses 2 and 3. Amen. Is that in your notes? There's just two or three? Okay, great. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon Him. Isaiah is talking about the Spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Verse 2 says, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon Him. The Spirit of, look what he said, wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3. And shall make him a quick. Everybody say quick. <laughs> Amen. Understanding. In the fear of the Lord. Talking about him as a man. He's all man, but he's all God. Okay. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Do we do that? <laughs> yes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ear. Are we not influenced? Yes. By what we hear. And many times by what we see. That's why all you guys, you married that woman. Beauty is only skin deep. You went into what was much deeper than what you could see on the outside. Now, preacher, you saying all of us are not pretty? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I just want to remind you. There are times whenever you get up and hair it all over. <laughs> And you had time, hadn't had time to sit there and say, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> You're still beautiful in the eyes of that man that married you. <laughs> okay, that didn't cost you nothing, but anyway. God, God sees the heart. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. That, uh, what's the spirit of wisdom? The originality of it. God sees who you are. He knows who you are. But the spirit of understanding. That lets you know God knows how to choose between right and wrong. Thank God there's no discrimination in the Lord. Man, I'm going to tell you what, if there's one thing that this, this nation has gone crazy with, is the race word. They have just went and just run that. Most of the people that's using that race word, they're the ones that's a racist. It is sad as what we're dealing with in our nation today that they're using this. God does not discriminate. We love everyone. That's what we are as a church. The spirit of counsel, because there's the perception, there's the perceiving that is happening and taking place. The wisdom and the knowledge, what is happening. The spirit of might, which is power. Remember what he says? He said uh, that uh, there in the book of Acts in chapter 1 and 18, you shall receive the Holy Ghost, not many days since that word uh, Holy Ghost is mean the power, might, and ability. It's what the word power means there in Acts as well. So he says also the spirit of knowledge. It's the prophetic foresight. That's, happened. that's what we're getting an insight in this evening and for the weeks coming forth uh, of what we're going to see is a prophetic insight through this word. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. No, it's the spirit of the fear of God. I know that you know, fear is a spirit. There is a, there is a spirit of fear that dominates this world. We can either yield to that fear of that spirit, that spiritual fear, or else we can find ourselves into the place to where that we fear a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Fear Him above all. That's where the fear is the devotion that is given unto him. And then also he said the spirit of the quick, the spirit of quick understanding and uh, discernment. When you get into the nine spiritual gifts, when it uh, gives us one of those uh, uh, spiritual gifts, uh, that's what happens when there is something that takes place. Uh, and when we know that it is not right, uh, that's when it's a stirring and a check right that quick. Uh, that you know, wait a minute, we got to look at this and evaluate this because this, this is not correct. 
God gives us a spirit of quick understanding. Too many times we push it aside and we don't pay it attention and say, God, give me the wisdom and the guidance of what you're doing here. Okay, anyway, are, are you, everybody still with me now? Okay. A lot of those other little tidbits, they don't cost you anything, but they sure are going to be extra when you sit down to eat when it comes to reading this word. Praise the Lord. Verses number 8 and 10. Are you with me again? Amen. Verses number 8, he said, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst, he says, of the elders, stood a lamb that uh, stood as a lamb that had been slain, and uh, with his horns and his seven eyes, which uh, are the seven spirits of God that was sent forth uh, unto uh, unto the to the earth. That's what we were just getting into. We just done all that, didn't we? Let's clip on down to verse uh, verse number eight, okay? And he says, when he had taken the book, verse number eight, and the four beasts and the four and the twenty elders, they fell down before, who did fall down before? Having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests And we shall reign on the earth. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. You know know what? Just like I noted too, there's no music like Christian music. It's the the best. But the harps, the the melody that was being echoed throughout heaven, the the golden incense that that he speaks of here is, uh, man, when when you back up in verse number eight, he said, and the golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Church, I know we've mentioned this to you, but don't never think your prayers are going unanswered or unavailed or, or that they're not being paid attention to. And this may sound a little bit foreign, but we'll prove this a little bit later on. It's going to show, I think, maybe be in the next chapter, I think. But at any rate, it shows you where that those prayers that are being prayed, it goes up before the Lord. And even after we may be gone, the sweet odor of that prayer, <laughs> hallelujah, is in the presence of Almighty God. So don't think it's a no or it don't mean anything. You pray for those kids. You pray for the grandkids. You pray for your church. God hears those prayers. It's a sweet incense unto Him. Verse number 11, verse number 12. He said, And I beheld, in verse number 11, And I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast, and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the what? That was slain to receive. Look what he says here. Seven things. Receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. God does a lot of things by sevens. And here in this, in his verse number seven, when he said back up, it's it's a new song. The word new is... N E O S that is in the Greek. That means that has not been given before. This is a new song that had never been sung before. This is new. Okay? This new song that had been sung. And it's seven things here power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, blessings, the power. Jesus is the power of God. Riches is the unsearchable riches of Christ Himself. Wisdom, the wisdom of the Lord God Almighty. He knows all the secrets. Jesus knows it all. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. And He says in strength, Christ can discern the powers of every evil that may be trying to lurk about to steal, kill, and destroy. He's our covering. He's our protector. Honor. When we see honor to Him, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. 
and glory. Glory belongs to the Lord God Almighty alone. Let no man get the power. Let him not receive the reference. Let him not be gotten in who he thinks he is. Man is nothing without the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that flows through his veins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Well, I felt like you might need to hear that in a stronger way. But anyway, amen. It's interesting because I know when we look at here at the Song of the Angels, it's uh, when we look at the, uh, the redemption, these are angels that, uh, that had never failed. But the Song of the Redeemed is bringing forth uh, that which is meaningless to those uh, that had not experienced that. So therefore, these must be ministering spirits that we read about. I'm down, Dave. In, in Hebrews chapter 1, and in verse number 14, when those ministering spirits uh, go about to minister. Everybody still with me now? Yes. They now rejoice uh, in that consummation of Christ. Uh, they, they are now, just like you and I, we're going to know. We're complete then. We're complete. Hallelujah. It's all going to be fulfilled. It's all going to be full. And I close with verse 13 and 14. It says, And every creature which is in heaven and on earth... Uh, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them heard, I say in blessings, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts, they said, I say amen. amen. And the four and the twenty elders fell down, and they worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. We're talking about uh, when it comes unto the revelation of the opening. This is the opening of the seal. He extends a full chapter in opening of these seals uh, that it shows you the importance in it. And we'll go to the others or to go through the process of it through each one. We'll go through the, uh, through the trumpets and, and the vials and, uh, and the other areas. And there'll be some, some others also, the thunders that some's not even going to, be, going to be related to. But God gives us enough to let us know that we can stay hungry, stay hungry, be hungry, and let our appetite be stirred. Because don't this book do it? When you get into it and you see what is beginning to unveil. So I know you can't wait, but hang in there. If the rapture don't take place, we're going to open up those seals. Amen. Going to be week after next. Brother Bernie is going to be preaching our mission service next Wednesday night. Then after that, we'll begin to go into it again. We'll go to the seals into chapter number six. I think, you're, I think you're going to... Uh, did you not enjoy this, though? Man, just the, uh, just bringing forth the understanding. I, you may be, may be different from, from me. I'm just kind of a, uh, a Louisiana cotton patch guy back in the woods of Louisiana. And uh, I may not be the sharpest tool in the tool shed or the brightest book in the library but when I read those uh, read those things and uh, they really didn't hit home until I studied them you know Brother Bernie but studying them out man they, they stir your heart for realizing what Jesus wants you to know about him and the Father thank God that he loved us enough he'd extend himself to let us see who he is. Are we willing to receive him in that context? Amen. Any question, any comment? Praise the Lord. Yeah, Brother Bill. No, I didn't mean he was the only one, but I felt like he was probably the one. <laughs> Right. Okay. Correct. Glad you said that because I need to correct that. That is so true because Jesus is the one that opened it. 
Gabriel was the one to receive the book. No man was able to receive the book. So Gabriel is the one that was able to get the book. There was no man able to do it. And we believe it was Gabriel because of what his influence has been through history. They would have it through Daniel and other areas. Yes, yes. And when his hand was taken out of the, out of the hand of, uh, of, uh, of God Almighty. Take it out of the hand of God Almighty. Amen. Is it clear as mud? Amen. Yeah, brother. That's what I was trying to relate. He probably felt that. He felt inadequate. He felt like, boy, man, I'm not even worthy to do this. And plus, I think the impact of thinking of all, just like the 12 apostles, of all in the past, and there's no one that was worthy to do that. And that's why that it hit him, and it showed, it showed the human part of him that he wept. Good point. Yep. Yep. Amen. I, that's, that's the way I would view it too. What do you guys think? I think okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sir? Not a just man on earth doeth good and sinneth not. Amen. Honor the Lamb of God. That was why Gabriel was the only one to be able to touch the book. But only Jesus was the only one that was able to open it up. Because Gabriel had not been through the things either, Jesus had suffered and done that. And that's another reason why he was able to unloose the seals that were there. So that's a good point. I just wanted to add that. Kind of interesting. But at the same time, when you think, man... Look at him being worthy enough that he was able to be revealed all of this and no one else was. So it's kind of interesting. Yep. Amen. Yeah. You know, I'm confused. You mentioned that this does not really apply to the church mm -hmm. or that they're not there. And yet the song that they sing talks about Jesus redeeming us. It says, and you have redeemed us to God by your blood. And I did not believe that angels were redeemed. No. These are ministering spirits that are doing this. And these are angels that, here's, here's what is going, going on and what is taking place. These are after, just like the millennial reign of Christ. Just like whenever we're there and we're going to spend, the, going to spend eons in heaven, we're going to still be singing the praises of God. We're still going to be praising Jesus, loving Him, magnifying Him. And this is what a small example, if we want to put it that way, that's going to be happening even through the ages because the angels recognize who he was and what he done. That makes sense? Amen? Okay. Yes. Praise the Lord. So the four and twenty are angels? No, the four and the twenty are not. These are, uh, these are men that have been uh, redeemed. Don't, don't really know exactly who they were. I have to look, have to look back at that again, to be honest. Uh, for the four and the twenty elders for the four and twenty elders that were there before the throne because they'd even had their crowns and they remember they'd cast all their crowns at the feet of Christ and of God. Amen. So yeah, these were redeemed men from off the face of the earth. Now the living creatures, those four living creatures, now those are the ones where they identify like in the book of Ezekiel. The eye before and eye and the wingspan and all of that, they are living creatures. Go ahead. 
There you're good. Good point. Yep. Amen. Wheel within the wheel. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Okay. Anyone else? Everything clear as mud? I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Amen. I'm glad we don't have to understand it all. Well, you know what? That's a good point, Sister Evans, because uh, if you if you did, then you might be uh, you might ought to be teaching up there in the scholarly place up there in one of the colleges. <laughs> oh, mercy! But that's where it's the timing element that we have. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You've heard teaching on this before. You've read Revelation. You've studied Revelation. But every time it's given, you probably pick up some new nuggets along the way. And that's what, that's what it's all about. It's all about. Amen. Okay? Praise the Lord. Good. Amen. Everybody ready for the, for the load to come up right now? Hallelujah. Well, we don't know. Amen. Maybe another 100, 200, 300 years. have no idea. But I think it's got to be soon the way things are happening. If it's not, it certainly is uh, certainly going to be uh, going by the grave. That's going to happen for sure. We love you. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Let's stand together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father God, we thank you this evening, Lord, for this church, Lord. For each one, Lord, that is, uh, that is viewing us, Lord, we pray your hand upon each one, Lord. Because you're the creator of each one of us, Father. You're the creator of all. And Lord, we yield to you as yielded vessels. We may be limited, but you're unlimited. And Lord, we pray that you just keep our understanding opened up. They will receive that which, Lord, sometimes it may seem to be foreign or, or dim or, or not completely, completely clear. But Lord, we know that through your Spirit, you can open our eyes. Give us that awareness and the clarity in our spiritual walk day by day. Bless this church, God. Lord, I pray your blood covering, your blood protection up over each one, Lord, from this fire, so this stuff going on out there in the world. We know the devil's out to steal, kill, and destroy, but Lord, we know, we know this scene. It is in you. We live, we move, we have our being. May your church be blessed and exalted in the power of your name, in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Amen.